Okay, hello, uh, I'm sitting here with Stuart Hepburn, who is the writer of this week's play, Marco Pantani, The Pirate. So, can you tell us a little bit about the play and kind of what inspired you to write it in the first place? It's, it's a very simple story. Um, I was cycling through Bridge of Allen one day, about five years ago, and I saw a friend of mine, Tom McGovern, who's a, an actor and singer of repute, and he said, Stuart, Stuart, I didn't know you were a cyclist. And I said, I didn't know you were a cyclist. So we, start, we, we stood talking outside the cycle shop in um, Bridge of Allen, and he said to me, are you still writing? I said, oh, well, you know, I'm doing what he says. Marco Pantani, there's a story for you. I said, well, I've kind of heard of him, but I'm not sure. Marco Pantani, you go and find out about him. So I got a hold of Matt Rendell's book, uh, The Death of Marco Pantani, and read it, and it was just transfixed by the story. And I kind of worked on the story for three or four years, and I thought that the story was about, um, don't take drugs, children. It's very naughty to take drugs. So I thought it was an anti-drugs um, uh, play, and I thought that's what I wanted to talk about, you know, that it was bad for, for athletes to take drugs. Um, but I could never get to the end of it. I could never really work out, well, what, okay, he dies, but, and what, and it never really made sense, and it all seemed a wee bit too didactic. In comes David Overend, my colleague at the University of the West of Scotland, and he says, have you got any um, ideas for stuff to do? Because he'd just done bullet catch, you know, and he was sort of casting around for new ideas. I, I said, no, no, no. And then I thought, well, actually, I've got that Marco Pantani thing. So he read the first 30 pages. He said, this is great. He said, but, but, you know, why don't you finish it? I said, well, I'm not really sure what it's about. Then, Lance Armstrong, the whole yeah. thing exploded. Mm -hmm. And in the original script, it was Marco Pantani, Mr. Drug Guy, um, Lance Armstrong, Mr. Clean, yeah. right? And that was the kind of contrapuntal device. But then it became clear, Lance Armstrong was dirtier than Marco Pantani. I was, oh my God, well, I can't write the original story. Actually, maybe it's not about that. And it kind of evolved that we, 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 we realised well, that it was about heroes. Yeah. It was about what makes heroes what they are and why do so many of them, you know, burn so quickly. You know, Gaza, George Best, you name it. And so that was the real, the point at which it really took took off because I thought it's it's about heroes, why they're different from us and why so many of them crash and burn. Mm -hmm. That was a very long answer. That's an excellent answer. <laughs> it does kind of lead on to the idea of, of obviously casting the part mm. because when you talk about heroes and you talk about crashing and burning, it's often very distinct personalities that we're looking at with you know lots of peaks and troughs. Mm -hmm. and obviously mm -hmm. Marco Pantani had quite a fiery temperament. So, how involved were you with casting? Well, David, David cast it, but David asked me about everything at every stage. So he was just very good at saying, well, we're looking at this person, we're looking at that person, we're looking at the other. And when uh, Jordan Young came on the, on the scene, um, I'd seen Jordan in uh, Black Watch and uh, I knew of his, his, his work and I thought, well, oh, he'd be great. Um, and David said something like, he's not a cyclist. And I said, I don't care. It's better a fit uh, non-cyclist than a tubby actor that knows all about cycling. <laughs> so, so once once Jordan agreed that he would uh, uh, shave his head uh, and and wear the goatee, um, it just all came came into place. I, I watched it today. That, that I, I saw the first night uh, on Monday. I came to see it today. I was just knocked out by it. I was just transfixed by it. So yeah, I was very very pleased with that. Um, Blythe is an old, old friend of mine. I mean, Blythe and me go back 20 odd years. Um, so when there was a chance of Blythe doing it, David and Blythe were in New York together and, and talking and stuff like that. So when Blythe was in board, I was very, very pleased. And then to get somebody of the calibre, uh, James Smiley, wonderful stage presence, wonderful voice, you know, wonderful ma ma maturity that he brings to the, the role of the grandfather. I, I couldn't be happier with the, the casting. Yeah, good. And, and yourself and Blythe, uh, you've worked together previously mm. on Taggart. That's right. Because you were writing. Well, I wrote the episode of Taggart 
when Blythe became a detective. No, did you? No, yes, <laughs> true. She, she, Blythe was, was, was a uniformed um, officer, a, a, a PC, in a previous one that Glenn Chandler had written. And then we thought, we watched it, thought, she's all right, you know, she can act. And we were trying to balance this rampant testosterone caused by, you know, Mark McManus and all those hairy um, arsed gentlemen. And we thought, well, we want to, we want to get something on the distaff side. And so I wrote the, the episode of Taggart where, where uh, Blythe became a detective. Yes. So, but we, we go back further than that. I think the first time I saw Blythe was in Shakers at um, uh, Cumbernauld many months ago. Wow, so, um, I, I know the old friend. Yeah, yeah. She was in the youth centre, I think. She certainly was, eh? Yeah. Um, so, is this the first time you've worked with David? Yes, although D I work with David Obviously every day yeah. at the University of the West of Scotland. Um, I first became aware of David's work when he did some site specific work at the Arches. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting project that he did. Um, at the Arches that formed his uh, PhD thesis. So I was kind of aware of him from then. Then he became a part-time lecturer at uh, UWS and took part in performance. Uh, uh, and now he's a full-time lecturer and a full-time uh, colleague of mine. So we, we, we share an office and everything. It's a fantastic fit, yes. you know, that, that I can... So I've already, we're already talking about new ideas and things to do. None of this would have happened. It wouldn't have, it would, they would have started if it hadn't been for Tom McGovern, but it would never come to fruition on the stage if it hadn't been for David. And David badgered Dave McLennan and said, you know, you should be thinking about this, you know, and, and obviously Dave and Suzanne came and said, yes, yes, we want to do it. But I would never have pushed it. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very grateful to David. Yeah, I think we're really, really pleased you've tried it on. It's been, a, it's been amazing to see how many audience members have been coming out and, and raving about it afterwards. Mm -hmm for a subject that maybe not everybody knows about. I mean, I know I certainly had no idea of his story until I'd seen the show, and now... That was, that's a real, a real problem, a real challenge, as we say, an education challenge. <laughs> um, I knew that cyclists would come and see it, who, would, who could tell you what the Caminola um, uh, chain set was that Pantani um, had on the Alp Duez climb in 1980. 1997, I knew that that person was going to be there. Also, there were people there who didn't know Marco Pantani or didn't know anything from cycling. So I worried that I was going to make it too boring for the former and uh, uh, too, you know, uh, not translatable for the for the for the latter. In the end, people who are really into cycling have told me they enjoy it. And people who have no, have no idea at all about Pantani mm -hmm. tell me that they understand about the story they didn't before. So I think I'm, I'm very, very pleased with that. Yeah, well, I was definitely a good litmus test for that. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> this, this, this lady, Imogen here, she came down to Ayr and brought the bike all the way to Ayr to a place she'd never been before uh, on time. And we got the bike done just because Imogen did that. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Well, I think that's, that's I think, I think. Okay. Um, and, um, the future. Um, Gosh. Are you busy? Uh, I'm time. very busy. Uh, just, I'm in the very, very final stages for major new TV series de in development for Wayne Mark Films in BBC uh, Scotland in Stirling, which I'm going away to rewrite at the moment. Wow. I've just finished 26 episodes of uh, Katie Morag yes. for Move On Up TV. I am a big idea that I'm in discussions with the National Theatre of Scotland with at the moment um, that I obviously I can't tell you because I would have to kill you uh -huh. if, if I did. <laughs> uh, and I've got my PhD in screenwriting that I'm doing at the moment as well. So there's one or two things yeah. going on. Yeah, <laughs> kept busy then. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks so much for giving us a bit of time and it's been an absolute pleasure to have a play here. Thank you very much. Amanda. Thank you.